Around the world, there are about 1,500 potentially active volcanoes. Scientists consider a volcano active if it has erupted within the last 10,000 years, and only about 550 have erupted in recorded history. However, the precise number is far less significant than their size. The Volcanic Explosivity Index, VI, is used to categorize eruptions. A VI of 1 ejects at least 10,000 cubic meters of material into the air, and each subsequent number ejects 10 times more material. Mount Tambora in 1815 had the biggest documented eruption, with a VEI of 7. The explosion was heard 2,600 kilometers away, and almost 160 cubic kilometers of material was hurled into the atmosphere. For six months, temperatures in the northern hemisphere dropped by 0.5 degrees Celsius as the dust clouds blocked out the sun. The year 1816 was termed the year without a summer, it resulted in failed crops around the world due to disturbed rainfall patterns. That was one volcano. There are 32 documented VI-7 or VI-8 volcanoes, and if they all erupted at the same time, the bulk of living creatures, including humans, would face extinction. If every supervolcano erupted we would have a difficult time finding secure locations to go because practically every continent has at least one supervolcano. But, at the very least, we'll be warned since the ground will tremble with earthquakes for weeks or months beforehand. The earth-shattering sounds would therefore be a dead giveaway that something wasn't right when E-Day arrived. Krakatoa which is not a supervolcano erupted in 1883, it generated a roar that reached about 4,800 kilometers across the Indian Ocean, breaking windows and deafening people in its path. Even the tiniest supervolcanoes would exceed Krakatoa's explosion, it's impossible to say how much damage this would wreak, but it would be epically disastrous. If we were fortunate enough to survive the initial wave of destruction. Following that, it would be necessary to seek out a fallout shelter, as these super eruptions spray billions of tons of ash, volcanic glass, and rock thousands of meters into the air. This is not something you want to inhale or be in the path of, because the ash cloud does not simply travel up, it also stretches out, crashing across the terrain at fighter jet speeds. Buildings would fall, airplanes crash in the air, water supplies would be rendered toxic, and electricity grids would be brought down. And because the fallout would be felt for hundreds of kilometers, any cities located near a supervolcano would be destroyed. Also, keep in mind that ash moves. Winds pushed ash to India when Toba erupted 74,000 years ago. As a result, if all of the supervolcanoes erupted simultaneously, volcanic debris would spread throughout the world. When the eruption is over, the devastation will have only just begun. Because most of that supervolcanic ash would linger in the stratosphere for the following six months, blocking sunlight and causing global temperatures to drop by up to 15 degrees Celsius. The eruption of Little Mount Tambora alone triggered the year without a summer, multiply that by the 12 or so supervolcanoes that are all spewing thick black dust, and you have a global volcanic winter over the next few years. In addition to ash, volcanoes spew harmful gases into the sky, such as sulfur dioxide. After a few years, just as winter came to an end, those gases would begin to fall from the sky as acid rain. When Iceland's Lochy volcano erupted in 1783, it rained down so much sulfuric acid that it destroyed agriculture and killed half of all cattle. The resultant hunger killed a fourth of Iceland's population the next year. Imagine that happening everywhere. And, because Lochy was not even a supervolcano, we can expect acid rain for the next decade. Say goodbye to civilization, which is unlikely to survive a decade-long worldwide hunger. Fortunately, this is almost never going to happen